Okay, here we're looking at the central and peripheral nervous systems. This image provides a good kind of breakdown of what's part of the central nervous system, which is made up of the brain and spinal cord, and then what's made of the peripheral nervous system. That's typically our nerves and things that connect to the brain and ultimately the spinal cord. So that's two major divisions, um, that peripheral, the ganglion, and those nerves, the brain and the spinal cord is part of the central. I'm not going to quiz you on all the very specific nerves here. You can see how many and how complex that they are because it's responsible for this network for sensing both exterior and interior um, senses for the entire body. So that nervous system, those receptors and motor effectors in all vertebrae and most invertebrates. So focusing first on the central nervous system, we see it's this association of neurons, and they're located in the brain and spinal cord. So in kind of orange here is representative of our central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is a little bit uh, more complex in the sense that it contains motor or efferent neurons, and they can carry impulses away from the central nervous system. So away from the central nervous system, this is like motor reflexes. Those that attach to the muscles and our brain says, boom, the muscle, it's these efferent or motor neurons that are carrying that message. In contrast to that, we have sensory or efferent nerves, neurons, and they carry impulses to the central nervous system. So they're kind of the sensory receptor. Oh, the stove is hot, right? And that sense is being sent to the brain. So that is an efferent or sensory system being processed in the brain and then ultimately leaving the brain is a sense of a motor neuron to help move the hand away from that. Now these neurons that I speak of, they're microscopic nerve cells that make up uh, the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. And to give you an idea of their size, about 30,000 can fit on a pinhead. Now this is a neuron and the nerve impulse moves one way. The direction of the message will travel is from the dendrites to the axon terminal. So it's going to move this direction. So as we see here in our arrow, the direction of the message will be received in the dendrite, sent to the cell body, down here to ultimately the axon terminal at the end. So that's the only way that the nerve impulses will be able to move through here. That message will travel in this way. Now that peripheral nervous system uh, sends information to the central nervous system utilizing sensory neurons uh, and we can see here that they're connected in different parts of the spinal cord. So this is why the higher up on the spinal cord that, that damage may occur, the more organs it can potentially affect. And if we have high injury, for example, C1 and C4 injuries on our spinal cord, that can ultimately impact even normal breathing. Even the lungs can be impacted by this. So we're looking at the same terminology, cervical, thoracic, Lumbar and sacral, it's the same terminology used for the skeletal system when we're defining the vertebral column here. So peripheral nerves for a particular region of the body feed into the spinal cord at a particular site. This is why if we can determine where certain pain is, uh, very important for car um, accident or injuries where damage in the spinal cord may occur, that could ultimately relate to the organs that, that may be affected. Now, within this peripheral nervous system, our nerves are visible bundles of axons and dendrites that extend from the brain to the spinal cord and to all parts of the body. For example, I just included an image here of some cranial nerves and olfactory relating to smell. Um, and I have a motor and our sensory nerves ultimately located here also. Here's kind of giving you that more complex area. We could see here our radial, our ulna, if you remember from skeletal system, we have our radius and our ulna. Uh, these are also following a very similar name, so we know in general where they're located. Now, the responsibilities of our peripheral nervous system is those sensory nerves carry the messages from the body to the brain. This is pain, pressure, temperature. It's going from here, we're sensing, going to the brain. We see that indicated by this kind of blue line located here. In contrast to that, we have our motor nerves, which carry messages from the brain, to the body to actually respond. So here we have someone touching a candle. We have the sense of high, this is hot and high heat. This could do damage. Going to the spinal cord, the brain, the brain's interpreting that as danger. It's then going to send a signal to the motor neuron here to the muscle to say move the hand and ultimately that hand will move away from the heat source. 
kind of putting that also into a kind of an image here. We have our afferent impulses, that sensory going to the spinal cord, and our efferent here coming out of the spinal cord, attaching to the actual muscles, re resulting in the movement of a finger here or a hand. Uh, just to give you that idea of how this kind of system works, of we're having a sensory impulse, and some of this is controlled, some of this isn't controlled, we have those kind of reflexes uh, that may occur. And this is occurring through the peripheral nervous system, and it's occurring through both our sensory and motor nerves.